Buju Kinamagene in Ireland Indigenous, and welcome to this production of the My Math Network. Today's lesson, Chapter Five, Lesson Five: Hands-on adding decimals using models. Our essential question for chapter five, how can I use place value and properties to add and subtract decimals? At this point, we will be getting into the paper copy. It is advisable that you use the paper copy to fill in as we go. This packet would have been delivered on the previous Wednesday. You are welcome at the end to either complete the assignment using the paper and submitting it at our next paper exchange, taking a picture of it, or you can just complete the Google form and have it turned in immediately. This packet is labeled lesson five, hands-on, add decimals using models and has a page number of 329. If you need to pause the video to grab what you need, this would be a good time to do it. All right, welcome back to those who had to go grab their papers and let's go right into build it. This is on page 329 in your textbooks or in your packets. You will see that you have more steps than I do. So I'm going to start out um, by kind of discussing the when you do this, you want to be as close to in the lines as you can. It is a little bit more difficult with um, online tools to actually, to actually color them in. Um, and therefore, I ask that you show me some patience on this one. We have 1.2 plus 0.7. In these cases, a whole square is represents one, one column represents a tenth, and one box a hundredth. Let's go ahead and we're going to color that in. I could use that tool. Let's go with this one. A little bit bigger. I'm coloring in a whole one so it's not as big of a deal, but you do want to kind of keep it somewhat careful so that you don't accidentally color in things you don't want colored in. So I have a whole one. And so 1.2 shade one whole and two tenths of a second grade. So a tenth is here's one, here's two. Now to do 0 0.7, I'm going to change my color just slightly. Well, two tenths is equal to 20 small squares. So I'll write that in real quick here. Now I'm going to do seven, one, two, three, oops, four, remember to be careful, five, six, and seven. To show point seven, you should shut seven tenths. So now on your step three, it's going to, well, you, you can see that when we get to step three, I have a whole one pink. And now this one that's using the tenths place, I have nine out of the 10 rows colored in. So let me clear those drawings. And I'm going to bounce to another screen just to kind of help your life out here. So how many whole ones were there? There's one whole one. How many of the single columns? Nine. So this represents the whole number one point and the tenths, nine, one point nine. And if you had checked your answer, at the, if you did an estimation, 1.2 is close to one, 0.7 is close to one, 1.9 is pretty close to two. 
Anytime during these lessons that I'm going a little fast, feel, feel free to pause and write things in. Otherwise, we're going to go on to the top of the next page, 330. We're going to model this one here. Helpful hint is always the first thing you should look at. 1, 1, 5 tenths, and 3 hundredths is equal to 1.53. Okay, good to know. So we're going to add 1 and 8 hundredths plus 45 hundredths. The first thing I have to do is I need to shade a whole one in. Let's go back to my pink here. I'm going to shade this whole, not with that, I'm not. I'm going to shade this whole one in here. Please be a little more careful than I just was there. It doesn't matter so much on this one, but if, if on the next part of this problem, if I'm all over the place and I can't color between the lines, I could make an error pretty easily. So now I have to also model in eight hundredths. Now this is where it gets a little bit tough. So I'm going to go up my eight hundredths. And eight hundredths is equal to eight small squares. Now I have to do 45. And let's do this one in orange. All right, so 45 is going to be four columns and five blocks. So let me get this back. I'm going to do my four columns first. Sorry, I wanted to orange there. One, two, three, four. All right, now I have five little blocks. I'm going to get these two up here because I want to connect lines. And then I'll get these three. So now I have shaded it as a different color. And you can view that I have one whole one. Now one, two, three, four, five columns of tens. So it's 1.5. And then there's three hundreds. Three. It's 1.53. And that's where our helpful hand here was alluding to. Again, try not to make mistakes like I did here. We don't want to go outside of the lines. You know, channel your inner kindergarten teacher it says color within the lines because it will be beneficial to you. If you need more time to compare your work to this, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to move forward. And I'm going to go keep that drawing in mind. Let's refill this one. How many whole ones were there? There was a whole one whole one. How many tenths? That's the full columns. That was a five. How many hundreds did we have? Three. So the answer to this is 1.53. We could estimate. 0.45 is close to a half. 1.08 is close to one. 1.53 1, 1 is pretty close to 1.5. Make sure you have these colored in. You're going to do a couple on your own here in just a moment. A couple practice ones. We think you're quite ready. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear this off. We want problem number three. All right, so these are the two I want you to do. And today we're only adding, so we don't have to pay attention to the sign. But what you're going to need to do is color in two full ones and 46 hundredths, one full one and 13 hundredths. You want to come up with an organized system, like I would suggest doing all of the whole ones first and then getting into your columns and then your tens. I know that normally when we're adding, we go right to left, but in this case, you're better off going left to right. 
your ones, your tens, and your hundreds. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to pause the video, do these two problems in your paper, sketch lightly, you don't wanna put a hole in your paper, and then we'll come back and see how you did. You may pause the video now. Welcome back, let's go over these. Over here we had two whole ones, And this should have been a third whole one. Then we had one, two, three, four columns here. A fifth column over here. And then six little blocks plus three little blocks. So we get nine. So we end up with 3.59. They did it differently than I would recommend. You have your two full ones. I'm not even sure how they did this here. You should have had a whole one here. I think they put a they put a whole one starting at 2.46. That's what they did. Uh, it's doable this way, but you have to remember that you put your four here and you put nine there. I'd recommend just going in the way I showed you. 2.05 plus 1.87. I have two full ones. There's a third full one. 0.87 would be eight full and seven tenths, seven of the little blocks. And then I have five more. So I put three here and two down here. Now I have one, two, three point all the way to nine, two, three point nine, two. At this point, uh, if you're still struggling, please reach out to me. The assignment today will be on page 333 and 334. On 333, it kind of gives you the steps and a reminder of how to do this, according to the book. You can use the way the book did to add, or you can use my methodology as well. You're going to want to add, shade the, the decimal models. If you're doing the Google form, you could shade it on this paper and just transfer your numbers to the Google form. There is no one no easy way to submit that Google form unless I were to use some different programs and we're not going to introduce a new program today. There's five total problems. Again, if you get stuck, reach out to me. As always, that reach out is mirland at sagchipschool.net. Office hours are from 2 to 2.30. If you have any questions, reach out to me. You can send me an email. I do my best to respond quickly. Hope you all have a minute. Gijigad. Follow P.